Hello everyone, this is Professor Ron, and this lecture is all about understanding the audiences of major social media platforms. Uh, so you may be wondering, why is it that we would want to know this information? Well, this information is very, very important for you as uh, an individual with a website or a business, and it, that's because you want to be on the social media networks or the social media platforms that your audience is on. If you're not on those platforms at all, you're really missing out and you're not able to connect with them. So today's lecture is all about understanding those audiences, understanding the demographics of the people that are on these different platforms, and it should give you a better idea of which ones you should use in order to better connect with your audience overall. Now, this lecture is going to be a little bit more academic in nature compared to what I usually do. And what I mean by that is I went out onto the internet and I did some research to try to find a uh, very reputable source that did a research study uh, where we could really have data here that I could present that was very beneficial, very accurate, um, and was done in a way that was through a research study so that we know that we can trust what, what it is that we're reading. Um, you know, there's a lot of blog posts out there where someone just says, you know, I believe that this particular platform is great for this, and this particular platform is great for this. That's usually, I mean, for the most part, true with what they're saying, but that's all anecdotal. There's no actual data to support what they're saying. So the purpose of what I did here is to find the study or a research study of the data that actually validates this. Now with that being said, what I was able to do is after researching, I found a research study that was done by the Pew Research Center, which is over at pewinternet.org. And the data that we have here, a little bit about the study itself so that you understand where we're coming from. First off, it was a survey that was done by phone, okay, so it was a telephone survey, and it reached out to Americans, so this is only the American market. It reached out to people that were 18 years or older, so anybody that's younger than that is not included here, which is important, uh, but if you're trying to get that adult audience, which most websites or businesses are, uh, this is helpful information. And the way it was done was that Princeton Survey Research Associates International they reached out uh, in August to September of 2013 and what they did is they were able to contact 1,801 adults that again were age 18 years and older and what was done is they asked them uh, if they would be willing to take a survey and then they asked them a series of questions so the results that I'm about to present to you are from that survey. Uh, and with this being said, some people will say, well, you know, this is from 2013. Is it still accurate? Everything that I know in my industry knowledge, I feel that uh, this may not be, the numbers may not be the exact same as they are today, but the overall trends and what's being seen in this survey, I'm sure ring true today as well. All right, so let's start off by talking about this uh, little graph here, which is the social media sites of 2012 and 2013. And what this represents is the percent of online adults who use the following social media websites by year. Uh, as you can see, not surprisingly, Facebook is the largest uh, social network that's out there. I think one thing that will be surprising to a lot of people is that LinkedIn, which is primarily just a uh, professional social network, that is actually the highest. And again, this is from adults that are 18 and older. Um, but that's actually the highest amount here, which I think would surprise some. And as you can see, the other thing that we can really take away from this graph overall is that social media usage, at least in 2013, um, has continued to grow. And like I said, I don't have the 2014 data as well, but if we did, I'd be willing to bet that 2014 grew as well. Next, we have a part of the study that's really focused on Facebook users. Uh, and you can tell, for the most part, this data I, I don't think is necessarily that surprising. A lot of this um, is really what I would expect anyway when I would be looking at Facebook data. But two things that are definitely uh, important that should be 
uh, brought out here is that overall 71% uh, of the users who were surveyed so just a, almost three-quarters of the people that were surveyed they do use Facebook on a consistent basis uh, in addition to that 45% of the internet users are uh, or, or that are age 65 or older are now using Facebook um, so 45% and that's actually up if you look at 2012 data that's up from 35% previously so in other words those that are 65 and older are beginning to use Facebook more and more often uh, so it shows that that particular demographic for you know that age range uh, definitely they're using Facebook a lot more than they used to and it's one of the growing segments within Facebook one thing that I know uh, and this is anecdotal just on news that I've read is that with um, snapchat if you've heard of that uh, snapchat is is basically a mobile person-to-person uh, -person messaging system where you can send um, some texts, you can send images to each other. That is actually taking away the teenagers from Facebook. Uh, so again, it's important to realize that this data is only people that are 18 and older, but if it were to go younger than 18, it's likely that there was a bit of a decline in that particular area. Now we move on to the next graph here, which is Twitter users. So among online adults, the percentage who use Twitter. Um, and this overall, so overall of other people that were surveyed, 18% of them uh, are using Twitter. And of those 18%, kind of breaking that down a little bit further, interestingly enough, 29% of them uh, were black or non or black non-Hispanic, uh, which is interesting because that means that the African American uh, younger adults uh, are are using this, and we could say younger adults because, as you can see in the age ranges, uh, this this particular social network is really overrepresented in the ages of 18 to 29, and 30 to 49 is a pretty wide range. I would have liked to have seen that broken down a little bit further with age, uh, but basically those who are 49 and under is really where most of Twitter usage resides. Next, we're going to talk about one that maybe all of you aren't on, but that is Instagram. Um, and Instagram really is the focus of, it's a, you know, photo sharing service uh, where you kind of have a social network part of it intertwined so that other people can see your, so, your, uh, your photos and comment on, on them and that sort of thing. So Instagram, it was acquired by Facebook in April of 2012. And with that being said, 17% uh, of the individuals who were surveyed are currently using Instagram, or were so in 2013, uh, and that was up from 13%. So it grew about 4% year over, th year over year. And two particular groups that you may notice are represented here is, first off, that the ages of 18 to 29 has increased from 28% in 2012 to 37% in 2013. So in other words, the age range of 18 to 29 began to use Instagram a lot more uh, than in the year prior. And also, similar to Twitter, uh, the black community or African American community, they also have begun to use this a lot more. Um, in 2012, they were at 23%, and in 2013, they ended up being at uh, 34%. Next, we are going to talk about Pinterest. Now, Pinterest in itself, again, it's, it's one of those social networks where basically you can make boards, uh, and what you're able to do is you're able to put pictures onto those boards. So, for instance, if you wanted a dream wedding and you said, you know, I, I want to collect all of my dream wedding items uh, or, you know, things that I want to be in my dream wedding, then you would be able to create a board for that and put all those items onto the dream wedding board. Now, Pinterest in itself, uh, overall, 21% of the users who were asked if they were on Pinterest said yes. Uh, that was up from 15% who did the same in 2012. Women in the U.S. really dominate uh, Pinterest. You can see that they're definitely overrepresented. There is 33% of the people who replied uh, that are on Pinterest actively said, yes, I'm, I'm female versus male at 8%. So it's mostly a female uh, social network. And also something that's really interesting about Pinterest 
is that overall, if you look at the income levels when you, re when you compare it to other social media networks, the income levels of those that are utilizing Pinterest uh, tend to be a little bit on the higher end, and so does the uh, education level. Uh, so I don't know, you know, the correlation there to me makes sense. The more schooling you get, the better off you're going to be paid in, in generally. But the point is, is that this is one of those where it's kind of, you know, the, the audience is a little bit more affluent uh, on, on Pinterest. The last social media uh, platform that we're going to talk about is LinkedIn. So overall, of all the people that were uh, surveyed, 22% of them utilize LinkedIn. Uh, and as you can see, men were overrepresented from women, 24% to 19%. So it is a little bit more male. Uh, something that's interesting here, though, similar to Pinterest, uh, as you can see, the education level is really overrepresented at 38%. And also the income levels from 50 to 75 thousand dollars a year or fifty to seventy five thousand dollars or more per year is also overrepresented and that's not really surprising because this is a professional network that's really geared towards uh, you know professional development uh, keeping your professional connections and that sort of thing uh, one thing that's also really striking about this data that I think is really important is that you can see 18 to 29 is actually a much lower usage than 30 to 49 and even more uh, than 50 to 64. So those who are between the ages of 30 to 64 are much more likely to use LinkedIn, which makes sense because at that point you're really ingrained in your profession and you have a better understanding of what it is that you want to do. All right, so moving right along, let's talk about the frequency of social media network use. Uh, now this is interesting. This actually shows um, the percent of users and how often they actually use each particular social media network that's out there. Uh, as you can see, Facebook is the runaway favorite, right? 63% uh, of the people use Facebook on a daily basis. Um, and I can say I'm one of those people. Assumably, most of you are as well. Uh, next, we have Instagram is also, in terms of daily basis, used very often, then Twitter. Then the daily use kind of falls off with Pinterest and LinkedIn. But as you can see with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, those are kind of hovering around the same uh, with, weekly, with weekly usage. And then as you can see, Pinterest jumps up uh, to 30%, meaning that it's more likely that people will check Pinterest uh, weekly than they will daily. Same thing with LinkedIn. It's represented at 34%, so it jumps up quite a bit, especially from daily. In other words, most people do not check LinkedIn daily, right? That's what this says, but they check it weekly. Uh, and then from there, you can see that the bottom most bar is all about, it's, it's less often. I don't know how they define that, but uh, LinkedIn is, is checked less often than all the other social networks, than Pinterest, than Twitter, so, you know, Instagram and Facebook. So this gives a breakdown of how often people are, are um, you know, actually using these social media sites. So in other words, if you're not on Facebook, get on Facebook with your own business page. Uh, you know, everybody's there. They're using it daily. You want to become involved. And same thing, Instagram, if you're not there and you think it can work and you can have an image-focused profile or company page, uh, within Instagram, definitely create that. And even Twitter, uh, all three of those are, are definitely the, the big three in terms of people who are using them on a daily basis. Now, the next part of the study talked about the number of social media sites that are used overall, because I think a lot of people see this information and they think, well, yeah, but all these people are using different sites, so how accurate is the information? Uh, and the study did a great job of breaking that down as well. Uh, and as you can see here, what it has is that it shows that 36% of the people who, were, who, who did this survey said that they only use one site which I think might be a little bit surprising to people. Uh, me, personally, I'm active on three sites, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, but a lot of people are not. So this just shows that it's overrepresented by one site. There are people who get into two sites, some into three, four, five, etc. Now, the last part of this uh, study was the social media matrix. And I think this is really, really important. So this actually tells you of the percentage of people that use uh, social media website A, how many of those are using social media website B? 
So in other words, what I'm saying is when you look at this, you can see the percent of Twitter users who use Instagram is at 53%. So in other words, those two pair very nicely. Uh, same thing happens with if you look at Instagram users who use Facebook, 93%. You can see there's a little bit of a drop off here with uh, the percent of LinkedIn users who use Facebook, uh, compared to all the others anyway, it's only at 83%. So this data does a good job in helping you understand if your audience, if you're on, if you're really active on one social media networking platform and you're trying to think of what other platform should I get on to be able to interact with a similar audience, uh, it's obviously not going to be uh, guaranteed. You know, there's a lot of variables here, but for the most part, you can rely on this data to see what other social media platforms it makes sense for you to be on.